Today, we're headed back to the 60s to talk about the Kawa 6 and why it may be the best medium format camera you've never heard of. So stay tuned. I couldn't think of a better way to kick this channel off than by featuring the first vintage camera I ever owned, the Kawa 6. It's a 6x6 square format shooter with a good range of lenses and accessories. I bought this one back in 1990 and it's still with me. The Kawa company has been around since 1894 in one form or another. They started as a cotton fabric wholesaler and at various points in their history they've been involved in pharmaceuticals, real estate, tape recorders, and other consumer electronics. Today, they're known for their spotting scopes and their Promenar series of lenses for Micro Four Thirds cameras. But they also had a 20-year run of camera production, manufacturing 35mm rangefinders and SLRs and the Kawa 6 series of medium format cameras. And that's what we're here for. The Kawa 6 began production in 1968 and lasted until 1972. It was marketed to be an affordable alternative to Hasselblad, sometimes being referred to as the poor man's Hasselblad. And that's why I have one. So let's take a look. The Kiowa 6 is a modular system with interchangeable grips and viewfinders, and it has a great range of lenses with Seikosha leaf shutters that are, in my opinion, pretty nice. Here I have the standard 85 2.8, along with a 55 millimeter 3.5, a 150 millimeter 3.5, and a 250 millimeter 5.6. And since it's a leaf shutter system, all the lenses have their own shutters that range from one second to one five hundredth of a second plus a T setting. And the big benefit of leaf shutter lenses is their ability to sync flash at any speed. The shutter control is by this ring on the lens, and the aperture ring is right below that. A couple of other things to point out on the lenses are the PC terminal, right here, and a stop down lever, so you can check depth of field. Moving to the camera body, you have the shutter release right here with a locking collar to prevent you from making those accidental exposures, and it accepts both 120 and 220 film. Now, the film path in the Kiowa 6 is fairly unusual. Most medium format SLRs use backs or inserts where the film is folded over back over rollers and runs against the normal curl of the film. Well, that design keeps the cameras nice and compact, but the film path here runs from the bottom of the camera across the film plane to the top. So it's similar to a twin lens reflex. And you can see how this leads to a rather tall design. I don't know if it's a benefit, but it's different at least. As far as accessories go, let's start with the most important, the lenses. Kawa had a great range to choose from, from a 19 millimeter fisheye all the way to a 500 millimeter telephoto. In between those, you had a 35, a 40, and 55 millimeter wide angles, the standard 85 millimeter, a 110 millimeter macro, plus a 150, 200, and 250 millimeter telephotos. Some of those are pretty rare and hard to find these days, but you'll commonly see the 55, the 85, and the 150 for sale on eBay. I recently found an old 1969 catalog listing of some of these lenses and their prices. That 19 millimeter 4.5 fisheye was listed at 2,700 US dollars in 1969. Factoring in inflation, that's about $16,000 in today's money. And I think that might put it on the short list of most expensive camera lenses ever. Also, that 500 millimeter telephoto was listed at $1,000, which puts it about $6,000 in today's money. Now, I've never seen either one of those in person or for sale anywhere, but they are out there. I just wonder how many of those were ever sold. Kawa also had a good range of viewfinders available as an option in addition to the standard waist level finder. These include a metered and unmetered 45 degree prism, a 90 degree prism, and a metered chimney finder. Here I have the basic 45 degree version. It's nice and bright with a decent magnification. It's small and it's easy to change out with the waist level. Swapping the finder out is simple. You press the button on the side and the finder slides forward. And the ease of doing this will come in handy, as we'll see a little bit later. There were also a variety of focusing screens available. But note, 
Screens made for the last incarnation of this camera, the Super 66, are not compatible with the 6 or the 6mm. Although when you see them for sale, it's not totally clear which it's for. I recently bought a Micro Prism screen that was marked Micro Prism 2, and it did not fit. So I'm guessing that any screen marked with the Roman numeral 2 will be for the Super 66 and not the 6 or 6mm. But feel free to correct me if I'm wrong about that. Also, one of the most useful accessories is the side grip. It mounts on the left and provides a second shutter release and it really helps manage the weight of the camera as it's not a lightweight. So now that we know a little about the camera, let's go for a shoot. Today we'll be headed to downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee and I've got a couple of rolls of Tri-X to run through it. So let's go. So we're out here today with the Kawa 6 medium format camera, um, 6x6 format. And I am down in downtown Chattanooga near the Tennessee Aquarium. It's a, kind of a cool place to visit if you've never been. So I've got a couple of rolls of Tri-X to shoot and uh, try out this camera. So the first thing I see is this cool, uh, you've got this contrast of shapes and angles here. This angular building with the smooth archway bridge. So maybe there's a comp composition in there. We're gonna find out. We're gonna give it a shot anyway. Let's take a few shots right here, see what this looks like. My shutter speed is one five hundredth of a second. And my f-stop is f-16. So I should have plenty of depth to feel. So there's a lot of sun and I'm shooting ISO 400 film, so that's it. I was gonna use my red filter for this, um, but apparently my red filter is dirty. It's got some sort of smudge on it. Not easily to come off, so I'll have to clean that up. That's just something else to add to my to-do list. All right, let's find something else. At some points during the season, this is filled with water, sort of a artificial river if you have it. Um, but I do like this composition. This reminds me of the Ansel Adams shot at, well, one of the Ansel Adams shot at the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Might try something with the wide angle there. But also, I sort of like the way this curve runs out through that part. So I think I've got at least two different shots here. I'm gonna focus on these river rocks in the middle. Just make sure I haven't got everything locked. And that's good. I'm gonna overexpose just a little bit on this next one. I'm gonna put my 55 wide angle on to see if we can get this curve here. Probably not as cool as the GoPro wide angle could shoot it, but we're gonna see. So this lens is definitely not wide enough to get that angle that I was looking for. Um, this is only a 55. I mean, if I had the 40 or uh, the 35 that's out there and probably costs about as much as a new Ferrari at this point. Um, I'll leave the wide angle on to see what else I can get without having to swap it out again because I'm sure I could find something. Uh, maybe even this same, this same composition. Let's check it before we move on. Well, it's okay, but I'm not gonna waste two shots of film on it. So let's go and find something else. All right, found another shot. Also a similar little artificial river, uh, but this is, the shadows are great here. A little bit different texture. So let's see what you think. Five hundred to F eleven. And I'll do some bracketing. Five 
500 at F11. And. All right, let's do 500 at F8 next. All right, just for kicks, I'm gonna put the 150 on it and get a tighter composition. All right, so I have the 150 3.5. I was doing one five hundredth of a second at F11. Let's go F8 here just to make sure. Check my depth of field with my stop down lever. All right, let's see what we've got. And let's do one more for bracketing. I guess I really should do three for bracketing, but this will be fine. Get some shadows in there. All right. Let's head to the bridge. So Chattanooga's got a really nice bike share program. And here we have a nice line of bikes with the bridge just over the top there. I wish I had brought 100 speed film so I could control the depth of field a little better. But I think there's a neat composition here, so I'm going to give it a shot. Still have the 150 on, but I may change that. Yeah, I need to change that. That's way too tight. We may end up going with a 55 here. Got the 55 back on. Need to meter the scene. And again, we're at 500 at F16. I do have a polarizing filter. That could help with the uh, exposure control. I may try that after this. All right. One five hundredth of a second at F sixteen. All right, let's do F eleven as well. I have two more shots on this roll. I'm gonna see what I can do with a polarizing filter to control this exposure some. So I can't make up my mind with the lenses. That's the problem. You have too many lenses, too many choices. I've gone back to the 85 standard lens and I've put the polarizer on there. That's gonna cut down a couple of stops at least for the shot and give me a more workable aperture. Uh, I'm gonna start out with giving it one stop exposure correction with 500th of a second at F11. And then I'm gonna do F8, just for kicks. And that will wrap up that one roll, all right? Let's find a shady spot, change film, and run another one through it. All right, maybe this won't be too fiddly, but I can't promise. Grab that roll of Tri-X, put in. Make sure it's wound all the way off. Good, let's lock that. 
Let's lock the shutter. It's always a good sign when you open up the back of the camera, the films run all the way through it. Nothing would be more disappointing than shooting your best photos ever only to realize that the film didn't advance. So again, this is, the film takes a unique path for an SLR, especially a medium format SLR. Because it doesn't fold back over itself like in a regular film back would. It just stretches across the back just like a twin lens reflex would do. So it helps avoid that odd bend in the film as it shoots. Wind to the start mark. Close the back. Wind to number one. And we're good to go. I'm gonna revisit this bridge shot. Um, I gotta sit here, I'm gonna see, I might put the 55 on because we can see through underneath one bridge to another bridge. Um, I don't know, I sort of like the way that looks. I might try that. Um, again, I'm gonna change the lenses. And here we go. All right, let's do one at F11 and a half. Another angle of the Tennessee River. Let's go back to the entrance. I'm gonna shoot down the center of it. I could shoot with the 250 straight down it. And I haven't used the 250 yet. I'm gonna do it. All right, let's swap it out. All right, so got the 250, 5.6 on here. I don't, I haven't shot with this much, so haven't really had a reason to, but I'm gonna shoot down the center of this bridge, compressed perspective. Uh, and I think that'll give me a decent view because the wide was just, that wasn't doing anything. So I'm gonna meter again. I don't imagine that it's changed. My guess is it's gonna be one five hundredth of a second at F16. Should have put money on that. Yes, I think that is exactly what we needed to do. Was 500 F16. Let's do F11. We'll do one more. Let's move on. See, so I got this statue going up through there. I don't particularly like the way that it's lit, but that's what I've got right now. Uh, but I'm gonna actually spot meter this. So I've got F4 in the shadows and F11 in the highlights of this set. So I am going to probably shoot at about five, six and a half and hope that hope for the best. I will bracket the heck out of this. 5.6. Let's go F8. Let's go all the way to 5.6. With this lens, we'll get a nice shallow depth of field at 5.6. I'm 
moving on. All right, I just have a couple more frames left. But there's this cool uh, retro pinball sign here. Let me see if we can get that with this 250. Uh, metered it already and it's telling me 125th of a second at 5.6. So 125 with this lens and this camera may be a bit shaky, but I'm gonna try it out and see. Do again, same shot. Got one more frame to this. Another thing, this camera is heavy and I've had my hand in this grip, which thank goodness for that, because man, after a while, it gets to be a little bit much. All right, moving on, looking for my last shot. I think I know what it is, but. So that was a fun couple of hours. Unfortunately, that last shot I wanted didn't pan out. There was a bunch of construction going on and fences and it was a mess. But I do like the results of what I did get. I don't think there were any award winners in there, but the images were nice and sharp and the camera handled very well. So what do I think are the pros and cons of the Kiowa system? Well, let's start with the pros. First off, the price. All film camera prices seem to be going up these days, but the 6 stays relatively affordable. And most times you see it for sale will also include the standard 85mm lens, which is currently running between $300 and $400 US dollars on eBay. Compare this to a Hasselblad 500CM with a standard lens running between $1,500 to $3,000 US dollars. Secondly, you've got a nice selection of lenses, which are also affordable. I think the lenses are sharp and have good contrast, and I've never been disappointed by these lenses' performance. Also, the waist level finder works quite well, apart from stray light from the side sometimes, which is the case with almost all finders of this type, except for the Hasselblad. It's bright, and it makes it easy to focus. And the hand grip really enhances the performance of the camera. Now, what are the cons? Well, you can easily find stories online about how terrible the reliability is for these cameras, especially when it comes to jamming the shutter and winding gears. Personally, I've never had any issues with this, thankfully. When I first heard about these issues, though, it was way back in the 90s. The blame was put on softness of the brass gearing and that if you use too much effort into the winding, you'd eventually have a problem. One remedy for this was to never use the crank when winding. So don't ever use the crank, only turning the knob. I guess this would reduce some of the torque and keep the problems away. Actually, the winding gear jam issue isn't just a Kiowa problem. A lot of cameras in the 60s era had similar issues, so just be aware that you need to go easy on these old cameras. Just be gentle. I've also read recently online that another problem with the Kiowa 6 is that the mirror slap is so bad that it can knock the lens out of focus at the moment of exposure. Now, the mirror slap does cause some vibration. This is a big mirror, but it's no worse than a Pentax 6x7 or similar. So I think this claim is a bit far-fetched. All of my lenses have well-damped helicoids that don't move without a certain degree of effort. Uh, they're not tough to turn, they just don't have any looseness or play. And you're probably going to have your hand on the lens at the moment of exposure anyway. Again, I think this is highly unlikely to happen. I've never had it happen to me. That being said, when they updated the 6 to the 6mm, they did add a mirror lockup feature to control some of the vibration. But that last shot that I made of the pinball sign... That was on the 250 millimeter lens using a 125th second shutter speed handheld, and I didn't have any problems with vibration. Another con, let's call it a quirk, is how you can't open the film back with any finder other than the waist level installed. If you have a prism mounted, you're going to need to move it in order to open the back up. The Kawa makes that easy. Press this button, slide it forward, no big deal. Another quirk, the film door latch is positioned in such a way that you can't open the back 
if the camera is mounted on a tripod. You'll have to remove the camera from the tripod to change film or use this. So this Kawa accessory is made to remedy that problem. It's a tripod mount that you can attach to the camera that basically relocates the tripod socket. So you can now open the film door while on a tripod. Problem solved. More money, but problem solved. Now one final possible con to the Kawa 6 system isn't really a Kawa specific issue. It's an issue with any lens that contains a leaf shutter. And that is if you don't use them, they'll get sticky and they won't work. This actually just happened to me with this 85 millimeter, so I had to send it in for CLA. It's a common repair, but it's gonna cost you a couple of hundred bucks to have it done. So you don't want it to happen to all your lenses. Better to keep the shutters exercised. If you're not doing a lot of shooting, get the lenses out once a month and go through all the shutter speeds. The worst enemy of a leaf shutter lens is lack of use. Now the final issue with the Kiowa is that it's just not a light camera. With the waist level finder and 85 millimeter lens, we're looking at 1.6 kilos. But I'd say that's not unusual for a medium format camera and lens setup. But if you're only used to entry level DSLRs with a kit lens, well, you'll need to hit the gym. So for all of the good and bad, I really do like my Kawa 6. Maybe it's just nostalgic for me since it was my first foray into medium format. It's not as refined as a Hasselblad, but it doesn't cost as much as one either. And in good working condition, it's a joy to use. And if you treat it kindly and keep the lenses exercised, it should be a solid performer. And even if you do have a problem with one of the lenses, it's a common repair that most reputable repair shops can take care of with a standard clean, lubricate, and adjust. So what do you think? Do you have any experiences with a Kawa 6? Good or bad? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so be sure to leave a comment. And while you're at it, consider giving this video a like, or better yet, subscribe to the channel. I have a ton of videos planned and I'm adding new ideas to the list all the time. A couple of episodes coming up soon will include one on the Canon T90 and the Bronica S2A, and I'd hate for you to miss those. So until next time, keep film alive.